while Britain was at war. It appeared to be just another bombing raid. But was this attack on a factory in southern England a more sinister story, involving espionage and a devastating raid that killed over 50 civilians? Recently discovered, these photographs show the aftermath of the bombs. Amongst the twisted wreckage is an unusual aircraft. What makes it unusual is that it is German. A German aircraft in a British factory. Why was it there and where had it come from? This is the Solent Sky Museum, a museum packed full of aircraft that tells the story of aviation in and around the Southampton area. And it's here in the museum's archive where a mystery aircraft has recently come to life. In amongst all these books and files are some of the records of the Cunliffe Owen Aviation Works. Cunliffe Owen was established in the late 1930s to build aircraft under license and deal with repair and maintenance contracts. The company had a large factory facility built just north of Southampton at Eastley Airfield. In September 1940, the factory was bombed by the Luftwaffe, and much of the damage is shown in this collection of company photographs. But it was while cataloguing this photograph that an eagle-eyed researcher spotted something was unusual about one of the aircraft. What we've got here is one of the albums Cunliffe Owen produced internally of the construction of the factory, various aircraft they produced under licence during the war, most importantly coming through, and post-war. But what intrigued me was one of these photographs of the air raid of the 11th of September 1940, and it shows aircraft they were working on at the time, such as hurricanes, uh, spitfires, that kind of thing, all twisted, obviously recognisable. Apart from this one right in the corner. Oh, uh, right, yes, yeah, so, okay, so this, well, obviously, that's, that's not a hurricane or a spitfire. It's not. So we delved deeper. And we found this photograph taken just before the air raid. Only a matter of days, more than likely. That's ah. the aircraft. Oh, now, I recognise that instantly. That's a Heinkel 111. But what it is. is that doing at Cunliffe Own? A British aircraft factory at the height of the Battle of Britain. A German bomber sitting, partly dismantled, in the middle of the factory floor. What we want to find out is what is this mystery aircraft? Where did it come from? Why was it brought to a factory? And is it, or any part of it, still out there waiting to be discovered? OK, well, what have we got to start with? Well, we've got three photographs. This one here, taken before the bombing, and these two, taken after the bombing. Now we know that the aircraft is a Heinkel HE-111. That's pretty obvious to start with, a twin engine German bomber. But if we go back to this photograph here, taken before the bombing, well, we can look a bit closer and pick out some detail. Down the side of the fuselage, just around here, we can see some lettering and numbering, which we think says G1HP. That's our first problem. These letters and numbers which run down the fuselage refer to the unit that the aircraft has come from. It gives us a bit of information, but we know that three Heinkel HE-111s carried these same markings during the war. So from that alone, we can't identify the aircraft. If we look a bit closer at the photograph, we can see towards the front, the Perspex canopy seems to be damaged. There seems to be bits missing. That could be from combat, from enemy action. The aircraft seems all pretty much together. Again, if we look underneath here, she stood on her own undercarriage, although the tires are flat. In the foreground, and to slightly to the side, we can see a wing and some other pieces which look like bits of a tailplane, which we assume is off this aircraft. But one thing is missing. Underneath here, this part, just underneath the fuselage, we'd expect to see a gondola, which would carry two machine guns, one looking forward, one looking back that's missing. 
we're also interested to find out more about the bombing of Cunliffe Owen in 1940. To identify the aircraft and see if we can dig up any further information, we're turning to social media. There is now a huge online community of aviation enthusiasts, all connected by platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Social media can, can be a, a massive resource. So we're looking, we might get things like anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal, diary or a journal, something that's not been previously lost. The Heinkel HE-111 was one of the most notorious German bombers of the Second World War. The design and production of the 111 was originally disguised as a program for civilian transport aircraft. The prototype first flew in 1935 and was hailed by Nazi propaganda as the fastest passenger aircraft in the world. But what was officially known as a four-seat smoking compartment was actually designed as a bomb bay capable of holding a 680 kilogram bomb load. When the German rearmament program became common knowledge, the 111 entered into military service and saw its first action in the Spanish Civil War as part of the Condor Legion. Soon afterwards, when hostility started on Germany's borders, the 111 was at the forefront of the blitzkrieg that rolled through Europe. But by the fall of France in May 1940, the 111 was starting to struggle against the faster and more advanced Allied fighters. Although extensively used during the Battle of Britain, as a daylight bomber, it endured heavy losses. Within a few hours of posting on social media, the team have already come up with some interesting information. We positively identified the aircraft as G1HP. Right, we're, we're definite that it's G1HP. We're right. definite that it's G1HP, but we've also attached that number to a the bombing group KG55. So how have we been able to do that? Well, in addition to the photographs, Avid Hatwearer on Twitter has found some film footage taken in the factory immediately after the bombing. Interesting, so that's our Heinkel. How interesting. Go that's on. it, and then we get uh, a close-up just in a moment. Just on the tailplane here, you can see that there's a number. 2217, right. And what's that then? That's the factory Verkan number. That would be the Heinkel factory production number. We now have a location for where the aircraft crashed in Sussex. And what's more, Chris has found a man who remembers the aircraft coming down. So this, this is the photograph uh, inside the factory at Southampton Airport. So this Heinkel, which had already crashed and taken there for investigation or whatever. Well, that's what we don't know. So we started with a picture of a Heinkel, which we didn't know what it was. And we've ended up here with you, because we believe you might know a little bit more about what happened when, when she came down on the 16th of August, 1940. Yes, well, I remember that because um, it was, it was, it was a su I'm almost sure it was a Sunday because it was a mid the middle of August, we'd be harvesting. And there was a telephone call. They said there was a German plane crashed. Anyway, father got his 12 bore shotgun and put his belt with cartridges on and went off and mother said, what are you doing? He said, well, we can't have the blooming Germans, he said, on, the, on my farm, you know. <laughs> and anyway, he went off in his car and he was, she was a bit concerned really, but anyway. This is the original, this is a 19, funnily enough, look, pub published 1940, oh, so it's, it's quite brilliant, good. excellent. It's an ordnance survey map. Now, the only thing is the scale's rather small, but right. um, if you, we've got to orientate it the right way around, that's the sea, look down there. Oh, okay. Right, there's the sea, look there, down yeah. there, look, and there's, there's Worthing, there's Steading. Right. Now, now the, the present road goes up like that. Right. And it's now tarmac. Okay. But it, it, that was called Maudling Barn. And all I know is, oh, it's crashed near Maudling Barn, which means it was somewhere there. Now, on a modern map, which is, makes more sense to see nowadays. Yes. So that roughly is where it crashed. Before visiting the crash site, Chris pops into the local museum at Stenning and strikes gold. Hello. What we got? Another oh, photograph. Another one. So here we are, the Battle of Britain, 1940, and there's the aircraft. Another photograph of our aircraft, taken unofficially by a local villager. Although it's only a photocopy, it shows the aircraft has made a good landing and was intact. Here, Wild Hills, I'll pull in here, yeah? 
Yeah, I think that's right. Just to pull straight in here. This looks very promising. Right, let's look at the map. So we're just along here and then. Right, and then. The, the right. So if we follow this with this, this then photograph. Where well, the road kicks, comes down and kicks off to the side. That looks like we've. It looks like we found our crash site. That yeah, looks like the aircraft, say. doesn't it? Yeah. That's we've now found the crash site, just a few miles inland, right on top of the South Downs. We started in Southampton with just three photographs of a mystery aircraft. We now know that that aircraft was a Heinkel HE-111 from a bombing group called KG-55. The bombing group took off on the 16th of August 1940 from an airfield outside of Paris on their way to bomb Heathrow Airfield. As they crossed the coast behind me at 18,000 feet, they were intercepted by hurricanes of number one squadron. And G1HP, the aircraft that we've been tracking, was shot down by squadron leader Pemberton and crash landed right here behind me on what would have been a farm track. We still don't know why the aircraft was taken from here to Southampton. So while Chris and the team are following up some more leads, I'm heading back to Southampton to learn a little bit more about Cunliffe Owen and the bombing raid. Jake Simkin is a historian who knows Southampton and its history extremely well. He's agreed to meet me at the factory. The only problem is, the factory isn't there. Well, this site is better known as the Ford Transit Works. So where, it's in Transit Van? Where the Ford Transit, the famous Ford Transit Van was made. But it started out as the Cunliffe Owen Aircraft Factory. And it was built on a 44 acre greenfield site. 44 acres, yeah. so that's a, that's a huge site. Just to the north was Southampton Airport right. with a long runway so planes could land and then taxi across to, to the works because the motorway that you see now which dominates the whole area wasn't there then of course right. and so that was built or opened in 1983 and that's when the factory was cut off from the airport oh right okay so this was this was one vast aviation complex then yeah. wasn't it tragically we know september 1940 there was the bombing raid here tell me about the workforce who were the people who'd have been likely to be working here then the workforce are civilians Local people, you could probably imagine them cycling in from Southampton, certainly down from Eastleigh where, where many of them lived. Over 50 people lost their lives in that tragic bombing raid. Amongst the dead was Fred Burnett. His two daughters, Audrey and Helen, regularly visit Solent Sky, where a roll of honour that once hung in the factory is now displayed. It was a Wednesday afternoon from where we lived and over the field and go over the river we could see a pool of smoke where Eastleigh had been where the aircraft factory had been bombed not knowing of course at that particular time what was going on it wasn't until later in the evening there was a knock at the door and the inevitable policeman stood there and told our mother. Just in a split second, life can change so quickly. Somehow, the planes had come from Europe, over the Channel, got to Eastleigh without any warning, not a siren, not a gun fired. The mystery has always been, how did that happen? How could that happen? What do we know about the um, raid that happened on September the 11th? I read somewhere that it was carried out by Erpro 210. Yes, Erpro 210 were a highly specialised tactical bombing unit. Bombing wasn't that accurate in 1940. It looks like a precision strike, doesn't it? This does look like a precision attack. However, there is a lot of conflicting information about what, uh, what kind of aircraft carried out the raid and also whether or not this was the intended target. Interesting. Now, coming back to that, in these two books, which were written by Sil Russell, he says that the raid was carried out by Messerschmitt 109? There are several eyewitness accounts from the time. Unfortunately, they all contradict each other. So one of the reports says that they were they were uh, uh, BF-110s. Uh, another report says they were JU-88s. A third report says that they were Heinkel bombers. 
the raid could have been carried out by any of four different types of aircraft. And the more you look into it, the more confusing it becomes. It's amazing that all the eyewitness accounts contradict each other. Cyril Russell was standing at Wollstone and saw the aircraft begin the attack. He states they were single-engine ME-109 Yabo bombers belonging to Erpro 210. ME-109s were designed as fighters but had the capacity to carry a 250 kilogram bomb. They would have been accurate but limited in range. Henry Hunt, who was working at the factory, said in a newspaper interview he and others were waiting outside on the airfield for four British Blenheim bombers to land. When they saw the German raiders approaching, they assumed they were the British aircraft they were expecting, and as a result, the alarm was not raised until the attack started. Had the attack been carried out by German JU-88s or BF-110s, this story could be plausible, as from a distance, a twin-engine Blenheim could be mistaken for either aircraft. However, he goes on to state that the Raiders looked like Hurricanes. A Hurricane would have been more likely to be confused with an ME-109. Henry also states the aircraft approached with their undercarriage down. Then we have this account from E.H. Willard, who was working at Cunliffe at the time of the raid. He claims that the aircraft that bombed the factory were British-built Bristol Blenheims that were captured at Dunkirk and were sent specifically to target the Heinkel 111. The Heinkel in, in the factory? Yeah. Wow. So, captured British aircraft used against a British factory. That sounds a little bit far-fetched to me. But it's interesting he's suggesting that the Luftwaffe knew the Heinkel was there. If that's the case, then there must have been someone on the ground relaying information back to Germany. So we're talking a spy. Espionage involved. Quite a conspiracy theory going on there, but interesting to look at. One thing that is clear from the eyewitness accounts is the confusion that the raid brought about. The attack was carried out fast and at low level, leaving very little time for any warning. As tragic as the event was, it seemed to pass almost unnoticed at the time, as many of the press reports focused on London becoming the Luftwaffe's new target. Had it not been for Audrey and Helen's efforts, even the original role of honour that once hung in the factory could have been lost forever. Our mission in life is to make sure that people don't forget what these people did for us. And it's a, um, an enormously important that we keep this tribute behind me here, which is simply a framed list of those who died. And let's not forget those who were badly injured that we don't know about to keep that in the museum for posterity and for young people to appreciate what these people did for us. It's something that's, and I'm sure it has with Audrey for different reasons, but it's just been with me all of my life. And we just do what we can. And it's been determination really that we won't let Colonel Lefeu and Ray die. Not while well, we're alive, anyway. The response on social media has been great. Thanks to everyone who has contributed, we've been able to pinpoint where G1HP crashed and that she was taken by road from Sussex to Southampton. Here, it sat in the factory until it was bombed. It then appears to have left the factory but then the trail runs cold. It's still unclear as to why the Heinkel was taken to a factory some 60 miles away from where it crashed. Our theory is it was going to be reflown again for evaluation, but those plans were scuppered in the subsequent bombing raid. We have many unanswered questions about that bombing raid at Cunliffe Did the Luftwaffe know the Heinkel was there? Nobody seems to be able to confirm which aircraft carried out the raid. And this strange report of the bombers having their wheels down. Now we've successfully identified the Heinkel, we want to keep this story going. Follow us online and see if you can help find any evidence as to what happened on September the 11th, 1940. Do you have a theory or maybe some information that might help? Who knows, maybe you could solve this mystery.